In this video, we'll make this awesome interactive Excel dashboard in four simple steps. First, we'll set up the dashboard structure. Second, we'll analyze all the data using pivot tables. Third, we'll create all the key KPIs, visuals, and tables. And finally, we'll make everything dynamic using slicers. So let's get into it. Step one is the structure. So first, let's take a look at what we're working with. And over here, you can see we have a blank dashboard tab. And then we have the data tab where we have our full data set, which you can download for free using the link in the description below. Suppose we work for Coca-Cola and we have this data set, which tells us all of the retailers that we work with. So we can make a dashboard for our US retailers. So to set up the structure, firstly in the dashboard tab, we're just gonna stretch this out to something like a width of 25. And then we can select that column. And this is basically going to be our side header. So let's go ahead and fill it in something like a dark blue. We also wanna get rid of all of these grid lines, which you can do by going to the view tab and unticking on grid lines. From here, we wanna add a few different shapes that are going to be the title. And right below, we're gonna have all of the different KPIs. So we can go over to insert and under shapes here, we're gonna go for this rectangle over here. And let me just stretch it out roughly from here to um, down over here. Now let's say we want it to be the same matching color as the side here. We want it to have no outline and as a shape effect, we want it to have an outer shadow like so. Now, let me fast forward how I do the other ones. If you wanna duplicate this, just control shift and drag down. This way you've created the second one. So we wanna add four KPIs. So you can see here, I have these shapes laid out. And now for this one, I'm just gonna make it lighter blue like so. And these are gonna be the four KPIs. Now, let me fast forward how I add a few of the titles over here. Awesome, we now have the title and four KPIs below. And then right below that, around row nine, we want to add two different tables. So the first one is going to be the sales by beverage brand. And then the second one over here is going to be the sales by retailer. So with that, let's go ahead and format one together. So here I'm just going to fill it in a dark blue like we have, and we want the font color to be in white. We're gonna bolden that. And then to center, you can either merge and center, or the other way is to go to this drop down under alignment. In horizontal here, we're just gonna center across selection. This way, what it does is you can still type things in the other cells, it doesn't just make it all one cell. So once we have this area, we can simply select it, use the format painter, and then just paste it over here to the side. And we have the same thing on both sides in terms of formatting. Right below, we're gonna add all the subheaders. So let me fast forward that. Awesome, this is what it's looking like. We have the brand, the sales for a two year period, and the variance, which is simply the difference between the two. Then down below, maybe around row 20, we're going to add another line. This one's going to be the sales and operating profit margin by quarter. And let me format this one as well. So Alt H H. That's the fill color there, and I'm going to go for the same dark blue. And then Alt H F C, that's going to be the font color. I'm gonna make it in white again. And I'm also going to do the merge and center like before, but using this, uh, this format. So center across selection and hit on OK there. Awesome, the structure is starting to take place. Now we just need to add a few of the images. So we'll have a logo of Coca-Cola up over here and we'll also have the flag of the US over here to the side. For this, I'm just going to go to insert and under pictures, go ahead and find them. So let me fast forward that. All right, now you can see that we have both logos for Coca-Cola and the flag of the US, and we're done with the overall structure. So that's 25% of the way. And the next step is going to be the data analysis. So we actually need to find the data and do something with it. So let's go over to the data tab over here and what we're gonna do is first make sure it's a table by hitting Control T if it isn't in your case. If it is a table, you should find this table design tab to the side. To analyze it, the fastest way is probably using pivot tables. So we'll go over to the insert tab and click on pivot table. So we can just hit on okay. Let's go ahead and rename this worksheet, maybe analyze, so we know what it's about. So first, if you recall in the dashboard here, the top part is going to be all of the KPIs. So let's go ahead and find those. 
The first one is going to be the total sales. So we can just add that under values and you'll find it over here to the side calculated. Then we also have the unit sold, which we can also add in there. And what else? We have the price per unit. But keep in mind that the price per unit shouldn't be the sum, that doesn't make too much sense. You can just be under value field settings there on that drop down. We can change that to the average, which makes a lot more sense. So we have an average price of 45 cents per unit. And we also might want to add the operating profit. So what's our profit there? Awesome, that's one pivot table done and we can work on the next ones which are going to be the two different tables that we have over here. So what we want to do first is copy this whole pivot table, so Control A to select it, Control C to copy and Control V to paste it down below. And over here we just want to remove all of these areas that we've just added and instead what we want to have is going to be on one side having the beverage brand under the rows and then on the other side we want to have all of our sales, so the total sales under the values. We want these to be split by year. So let's go ahead and add the invoice date. We're gonna put that under the columns. Now we don't want the full date breakdown. Instead, we only want the years. So we can remove these and just put the years in there for now. But let me do the same for the other table. Nice, now we're just missing one piece of data, which is going to be the chart over here for the sales and operating profit margin by quarter. So we'll also add another pivot table and just paste it down over here. And for this one, we said we want the sales and we also want the operating profit margin. So let's go ahead and drag that and drop it over here. But we don't want the sum of it. We're just gonna get the average instead. So under value field settings, let's go ahead and click on the average. We can remove the years from here as we're actually going to put them in the rows so we can get rid of the retailer as well. And here on the, on the side, we want to put it by quarter and put the year on top. So we, we're going to put it on top there and we have all of the years and the quarters inside of them. Now we don't want it in this group format. So instead we can go over to design and under report layout, we want it to be show in tabular form. This way we're gonna see the full split. So when we open that up, you can see that we have the year on one side and then we have the quarters. We also don't want any of these subtotals. So we can go over to subtotal and do not show subtotals. This is because we're gonna make it a chart later. So it's easier to do it this way. When it comes to charts and pivot tables, it's actually easier if we make it separately. So over here to the side, we're just gonna link it by going to equals and linking add the year first and just dragging that all the way across down and across so Control r to drag to the right and Control d to drag down now we have all the data but not in pivot table format instead just linked and we'll use this for the chart after if you find this a bit too fast to follow along but you realize just how much of an edge being good at excel would be for the workplace you can consider checking out our excel for business and finance course to become proficient in Excel. With our comprehensive curriculum, we cover everything you need to know, ranging from formatting best practices and shortcuts, to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before I started working in an Excel-heavy corporate job. If all of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below and if you want more than just Excel, we also have a ton of other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more. All right, back to the video. All right, that's 50% done, which takes us to our third step, which is going to be adding the KPIs, visuals, and tables. So going over to the dashboard tab, and first we're gonna work on these tables over here. So for the sales by beverage brand, we're simply going to link those to the ones in the analyze tab. So we can just go to equals and we have that full table over here. So hit enter there. Then we'll drag it down and across with control R and control D. This last part is the total right now, which we don't want it like that. Instead, we want to do equals and the current year minus the previous year and hit enter. You could also do the percentage change if you wanted. In this case, I'm just gonna go for a total. We'll put the total 
as the bottom here and that's just fine as is. You could also calculate it with alt equals and then just dragging that across. Awesome. To reformat these numbers, we can just select them, go to control one there and under number, we're gonna want a number format with comma separators to make it more readable and no decimals are needed. So just hit on okay. That's what it's looking like. For this total here, we could also format it by adding say a top and a bottom border and we could also choose a fill color like this yellow one and bolden it to make it stand out a bit. Awesome, now let me do this other one. Nice! Now for the variances over to the side, we could add some kind of conditional formatting to make them a bit more easy to view. So under data bars, we could go ahead and pick something like the variance. Let's say we go for a green color, same thing over here and go ahead conditional formatting data bars and let's go ahead and pick this green color. Now we can see what's been the biggest increase. Overall, it's all looking good as it's green. If it were negative, like let's say I go ahead and put a zero here, you'll notice how it gives us a red line, which is nice to see the difference there. Now let's work on the KPIs that we have up top. And for each of these, we're going to add a separate text box. So under insert, we would go under shapes and select the text box, which is the first part there and let's just put it over inside of this area and then we'll do the same for all the other ones. We can reformat this by removing the fill, so no fill and removing the border, so no outline there. What we want to do is once we have it selected, we just want to go to the formula bar and go to equals and we can't actually just link it by clicking on the cell. You'll notice that it's going to give us an error there. Instead, the right way to do that is just going to be to Selecting on it, going to the formula bar, hitting equals, and just manually typing where it's located. So it's in analyze and cell A4 and hit enter. Now you see that that number is exactly the same. Now to format this number, we can go ahead and change the color and make it bigger over here. But to change the formatting there, we, we should do that over here. So for these two, we're just gonna go ahead and make it a number format and add the separator. Same thing goes with this other one, so I'm just gonna select it and paste it over here. And this one, it's the average price. So let's go ahead and just make it around two decimal places. And now you'll notice that it's been updated here. Now for all these other ones, we can just control shift and drag. Now this one's no longer A4, but rather B4 and hit enter there. If you lose the formatting, you can always go back to the original, click on the format painter and paste it to the next one. To add the actual headers for each box, you can simply type once you have the box selected. We can choose the total sales here, for example, and now we can format it. Nice. Now for the average price here, it might be good to put a dollar sign in front. We can do that by under the average price per unit. Once we have it selected, we can go to this drop down under more number formats, which is the same as hitting control one. We can go to currency here and let's say I'm just going to put a dollar there and hit on OK. Now you can see that we have a dollar sign in front. Finally, we can work on the chart down here in the bottom. And for this, we'll go over to the Analyze tab all the way to the bottom here. Let's first get rid of this. And you remember that we made this table to the side. So let's go ahead and select this whole area and then go to Insert. Under Recommended Charts, let's just go for this first one over here and hit on OK. You'll notice that we do have a series 2, but we can't actually see it. That's because one side is in values, which is this one, and the other one is in percentages, so it's really small, a small number. So we can right click there and go to change chart type. Now if we go over to the bottom under combo, we want to make this one a line, which is fine as is, but we want it to be on the secondary axis. Now we can see a lot better and hit on OK there. We can also change the series names by right clicking on them and going to select data. So this one we're going to edit as a series one. It's simply going to be the sales and hit on OK. And the second one is going to be the operating profit margin and hit on OK again. Now we're ready to move this chart. So control X and under dashboard control V. And let me fast forward how I edit this. You can see I've gotten rid of the title and I've stretched it out. Another thing we can do, these numbers are kind of hard to read. So we can right click and under format axis, we can go under number 
and here instead of general we can go to number zero decimal places and we want to add that separator and that's all we need there so we can close out of that we can also make this a bit nicer to match our style by changing the fill color to our dark blue and for the second one we could add some markers so right click format data series and under this fill here we're gonna go for line first and a solid line that's going to be in our red color let's say and we also want to go to the markers all the way to the side here and under marker options we want a built-in marker that's going to be let's say a circle in size 5 is fine and we want that to have a solid fill color that's gonna be let's say in white so under border down below we're gonna go for a solid line and let's make that a red line we can make that a bit thicker of a border let's see what that's looking like great we can get rid of this border around it so under no fill and we're gonna go for no border as well now that's looking a lot cleaner so let's scroll back up to see what it's looking like we can collapse this top ribbon if it's bothering us by hitting on collapse the ribbon now we can see a bit more of the dashboard awesome now we're 75 percent done and the next step is going to be to make it dynamic using some slicers so at the moment if we want to change let's say by different regions so filter by that or maybe change by years we can't quite do that yet so we're gonna go over to the analyze tab and let me just bring back this this um, ribbon so i'm gonna click on any tab deselect the collapse the ribbon and there we go so now we can just select on any pivot table and what we want to do is under pivot table analyze click on insert slicer this is basically a filter that's gonna make the dashboard dynamic let's suppose that we want one by all the different regions so we want to be able to filter by region we can then move that with Control x and then bring it to the dashboard let me fast forward how i add this awesome you can see what that's looking like to the side let's suppose i go for the midwest you'll notice all these numbers change that said nothing else is changing over here that's because this slicer isn't linked to the other pivot tables so under the analyze tab we want to go to the next one and then under pivot table analyze we want to filter connections this is gonna make it linked to that slicer so we want to tick on that let me fast forward how i tick them for the other ones awesome so now that it's linked when i go back to the dashboard and select let's say the midwest you'll notice that all the values are changing same thing with the chart down below you'll see how that's moving as well awesome now let's click on this x there to the filter we could add a second filter as well let's say maybe for the years so we can do that by up over here let's say selecting the first pivot table and under pivot table analyze insert slicer again and we'll do one for the years so it's not going to be the invoice date up here but rather the years on the bottom and hit on ok you'll notice that we do have these strange ones that are basically dates that don't exist for us we only have 2022 and 2023 so if we want to get rid of these three that are kind of useless we can just go to right click and under slicer settings you'll see here hide items with no data so we want to tick on that and hit on ok now that's looking better awesome at the moment this one's only linking to the kpis and maybe it makes sense to leave it that way as the tables here are not going to have any values for 2022 and same thing with the chart down below let me x that to get rid of it overall not sure if a year slicer is the most useful but you get the idea of how useful they can be now one final feature that's probably nice to have is going to be a date where we updated it so we can just add a simple text box on the bottom just gonna copy and paste this one maybe put it down over here it's simply going to say whenever we updated it so you can see there that it says last update january 2024 it's just a bit of a best practice thing so let's get rid of this top part and collapse the ribbon there just to see what things look like so we've made this fully dynamic dashboard in just a few simple steps now to make more advanced visuals like these that goldman sachs makes you can check out this video over here or take our excel course over here hit the like and the subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one